In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, I have a lot to say, but there's not much time. So, I, uh, and I don't have any text, which I never have a text, so if I say something and artfully, uh, I do ask forgiveness for that, and I'm going to hit a couple of different things, and maybe they'll string together, and maybe they won't, but um, the, uh, struck me this morning, I happened to wake up at 628, and I live, I live right over there, and my house looks over through the trees onto the sound, and it was one of the most glorious sunrises that I think I've ever seen. And then I thought, I, I wonder how much of that is because of the smoke in the air um, from the fires that are going on. And then I thought of our opening reading and a little context on it, because what we heard doesn't give it. Chapter 17 starts off with a drought that's going on for years. And so at the end, um, where it talks about rain, that's what that's about. Uh, this is a situation in the middle of a drought that is unbelievably challenging, that Elijah comes into, and that the widow um, welcomes him in the midst of, you may not know it, because of we're not reading the whole thing, but in the midst of extreme poverty and extreme drought and famine, she welcomes him and provides food for him. And the context, I think, is far more important um, than just pulling one or two things out of there. The other reading from the Gospel is similar, and I think it's important to note that they both star women who are unbelievably generous with what they have. It's a different story. In this case, there's the example of the wealthy Pharisees and scribes who like to parade around and show off, and a poor woman who gives all she has uh, to others. Then there's this line in the psalm, which may have struck you. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. Um, and depending on where you are, sometimes that sounds really good, and sometimes that sounds really bad. Um, same thing with our prayers of the people. Um, at the 8 o'clock, and on Good Friday, for what it's worth, uh, we pray at the 8 o'clock, so this is a little heads up, um, and at Good Friday, we pray for our governor and our president and our presiding bishop and our president-elect, um, and that can be challenging sometimes uh, because that's where people are. Sometimes they think that's great. Sometimes they don't like it. Um, I would say, and I'm a professional Christian, and I think some of you are too, I would say it's very hard to be a Christian. I think that sometimes people think that it's easy to be a Christian because we're all about love. But that is exactly why it's so hard to be a Christian. It is not easy to love your neighbor as yourself, especially during leaf blowing season. <laughs> but it is not easy ever because you know what your neighbors do, how they live, um, things they say, And sometimes it goes well beyond just driving you nuts to kind of rage or anger or hatred. And as Christians, we are called not to do that. And that is very hard sometimes. And I think if you're honest, it's very hard a lot. Our two stories about the two women, they're in hardship. They're in extreme hardship and yet they give, and they love, and they are perfect biblical examples of what the love of God in our hearts looks like, the darkness not overcoming everything, and the light still shining out. And that is very hard, even if you are a professional Christian, and you should know that. There's a wonderful story we're reading we're just at the end of it. We've been reading the Gospel according to St. John 
for months. It goes on, some of you are in the class. It goes on and on and on. It's 21 chapters, it's wonderful. Um, and when we're done, we're gonna read the letters according to St. John. And there's a really interesting kind of balance in the letters from St. John. On the one hand, there's all this stuff about Antichrist that people can't wrap their heads around. They don't know how to deal with basically anger in the Bible. And on the other hand, many of our most famous passages about love come from St. John's letters and Gospels. And the great story, and this is not in the Bible, but I wish it was. There's, there's probably a lot of things that, that we wish was in the Bible. The story is that St. John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple, John the son of Zebedee, one of the twelve, one of the apostles, who's there at the cross and is, you know, told by Jesus that this is your mother and this is your son. The story is that he's the only one of the twelve that lives to a ripe long age. And he builds up a community around himself. And they have real difficulties with a lot of their neighbors. And if you know the gospel according to St. John, you see some of that creep in. They have some real difficulties. But throughout all of their difficulties and throughout everything that they went to, as he got older and older and older. The story is, is that by the end, all he was telling everybody is little children love one another. I would love to tell you that um, everything is always going to be going better and being great. But if you read the Bible, most of the stories that have the most meaning, to me at least, are people in hardship that are able, even in the midst of that, to spread the good news of the love of God to those around us. And I encourage you to do that. Um, and I, I don't mean specifically wherever you are this week. And I know a lot of people are in a lot of challenging places this week. But I mean, in general, life is not easy. Life is not fair for most of us. And if we can spread the love of God and try to help others and make it better for them, even if it's one at a time, then I think we're on the right track. And I think we're spreading the love of God and being Christians. And I'll close with this. It is not easy being a Christian because we are called to show the love of God to everyone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand.